Okay, let's consider the function f of x equal absolute value of x minus 2. We know that the point 2, 0 is the vertex that happens when x minus 2 is 0. That means that x equal 2. And we can find two other points and then the graph looks like this. Now, starting with this function, let's think about this function. g of x equal negative f of x. In this case, this function is just the function negative absolute value of x minus 2. And we can take some values for this function by selecting the first entries that we have selected here for the graph of f. 2, 3, and 0. When we replace 2, we get a 0. When we replace 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. Absolute value is 1, negative 1. And when we replace 0, we get a negative 2. We notice that the points that we get, 2, 0, 3, negative 1, 0, negative 2, are essentially the same with the difference that the second entry has been multiplied by negative 1. Therefore, the graph of this function is going to look like this. 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, 1. And we have 2, 0, 3, negative 1, and 0, negative 2. Then the relation between these two graphs is that this new graph is the one that you get when you flip this graph across the x-axis. Then this is a reflection across the x-axis. This happens in general. If you have a function f of x and you consider the new function negative f of x, then the graph of g is just the reflection across the x-axis of the function f. Let us do a picture. If this is your f, then your g is going to be the reflection across the x-axis and it will look like this. Let's consider another example. Let's take g of x equal to f of negative x. In this case, it is absolute value of negative x minus 2. We notice that we can achieve the same values of y by changing the sign in the values of x. Then, for example, if we input negative 2 in this function, then we have g of negative 2 is negative negative 2, which is 2 minus 2 is 0. If we use as an input negative 3, then g of negative 3, it will be negative negative 3 minus 2, it will be just 1. And if we input 0, then we will get just 2. Then we get the points negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, and 0, 2. And the observation is that if we have a pair on the graph of f, then when we change the first entry by multiplying it by negative 1, you get a pair in the graph of g. When you think about this relation, you can see that the new graph is going to be like this. Let's see, this is negative 1, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, and 0, 2. We get that the new graph is just the reflection across the y-axis. In general, if we have a function f of x and we consider the function f of negative x, then the graph of g is going to be the reflection across the y-axis of the graph of f. For example, if this is your graph f, your graph g is going to be like this. This is going to be y equal to g of x.